the two sides of Star Trek Day 2023. Yes, it's episode 222 of Trekland Tuesdays Live with me, Dr. Trek Larry Nemechek, coming at you right here from the heart of Trekland. It's a funky day right here from the heart of Trekland uh, for some clarity, some sanity, and the big picture in all things Star Trek. Wow. Hello, everybody. It's another Tuesday here in Trekland Live. And if you're watching us later on YouTube, you should try to make it live at this time, 1 p.m. Pacific, uh, 4 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. UK, 10 p.m. Central Europe. I know the Aussies can see us too and folks in East Asia. So we're global. And I'm glad to be here with you because this week, well, the thing that the 500 pound gorilla that's kind of staring us in the face yeah, it is Star Trek Day. This week, it really struck me. There's the excitement of Star Trek Day, and it's gotten to a point now since they've since Paramount Plus, since Paramount Global with CBS and Toe has has resurged Star Trek Day. Well, they really recreated it at the beginning of Discovery as a promotional vehicle. We just used to say, "Hey, happy Star Trek anniversary day." Ha-ha. <laughs> Star Trek Day wasn't a thing until I heard it being used that fall of 2017, really. But uh, it's grown. We had the pandemic. The vi- it went virtual viral. No live event this year. Maybe that's a thing now with expenses. And maybe it's a thing probably more so with the current strikes. More on that in a second. But no, there's, there's uh, some virtual viral fun coming up on Thursday. And just... Just to recap all of this, on Friday the 8th, and hello once again, everybody. I will get to the chat in just a second. But on Friday the 8th, uh, and using folks, especially Jerry O'Connell, who is hosting a special, which I'm sure was all filmed before the actor strike started in June. But there's a day-long celebration. For one thing, it's viral, so it's going to be streaming. There aren't really times tied to this. So it's going to be another retrospective. Of course, Star Trek Day is the anniversary of the first day that The Man Trap, the original series, aired in 1966, Thursday, September 8th. Although I know that it was shown two days earlier on some CBC channels in Canada. Yes, we know that. So you can watch Star Trek Day, the special that Jerry is hosting on Star Trek.com's website, on YouTube, on the Paramount Plus and the Star Trek official channels, and on the Twitch and on the Facebook. So pretty much where you're seeing me here is where you can get it. You can also see it to stream in the U.S. On, now, those are supposed to be global, by the way. All those online sites, Star StarTrek.com, the YouTube, the Twitch, the Facebook, those are all supposed to be global. Then streaming in the U.S., it'll be on Paramount+. Plus. It'll be on Pluto TV, Paramount Plus Picks, <laughs> Star Trek, more Star Trek, and the Pluto, all those arenas. And on Mixable, which up until this moment, I'd never heard of. It's also going to be on certain local CBS affiliates, which is interesting. And Comedy Central and Paramount Network and Pop TV and Fave TV and Smithsonian.com. And on top of that, there are going to be the first two episodes of Strange New Worlds, way back with Strange New Worlds and Children of the Comet, are both 101 and 102 are going to be seen at 8 p.m. Eastern and 8 p.m. Pacific on CBS, regular old school Blue Bloods CBS. CBS, the home of Lucille Ball and George Burns. Um, So that'll be something. And then what's been added to today, the news that came out of Comic-Con San Diego, Star Trek, the anime. This is not only the, what are we up to? The 57th anniversary of... The Man Trap, the premiere on live TV. This is the 50th anniversary of Star Trek, the animated series. And it's the fourth anniversary, just about, of my friend Aaron Harvey's co-written book with Rick Sheppis, the animated series guidebook, the official one. But there's a 50 years of Star Trek animation special. And as you know, just in the last five years, the history of Star Trek animation has kind of quintupled. (laughs) And not just because of Prodigy, and Lower Decks, but also remember the short treks that were animated too. So there's a special that's that's coming. There's also the screenings that are going to be in theaters. Okay, number one. 
those series and people have been complaining about there's not enough cities the whole west coast is vancouver canada and san diego which is crazy there's no new york screening there's no chicago screening mike mcmahon's been online twitter saying that he got the vancouver one so all the titmouse introverts can finally go see their work but um any uh, mike also was tweeting at least yesterday that there were still seats available at some of these venues columbus dallas denver Philly, Phoenix, San Diego, St. Louis, Washington, D.C., Vancouver, Calgary, and London. So there you go. That's happening. Now, what's been exciting today, whether you're going to those or not, the launch of Star Trek Very Short Treks, which some of this was teased with seeing, oh, like Riker and Saru, uh, Neelix in animated form. But what's going to happen is starting this week, using the voice talents of, yeah, yeah, Jonathan is Riker, uh, Doug is Saru, Armin is Quark, okay, plus Ethan is Spock, Gates is Crusher, Celia as Uhura, Connor as Trip, Bruce Horak as Hammer, Noel Wells as Tendi, and George Takei as Sulu, and Jerry Mathers as the Beaver. Oh, also, apparently, the ghosts of Jimmy Doohan and Majel Barrett will be all male and female guest stars. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, this is pretty good. Star Trek, the animated celebration. It's called, these little things, though, are called Star Trek, the very short treks. They're from Casper Kelly, comics genius. There'll be one a week for five weeks, starting this week on Friday. They're going to be, oh, the chapters of the comic book. There's a, there's a chapter from IDW a month called Star Trek The Animated Celebration Presents The Shimer Barrier. Lou Shimer, Norm Prescott, Lou Shimer from Filmation. The Shimer Barrier. There'll be a chapter of the comic book debuting digitally on Star Trek.com. Physical copy, copies are available at New York Comic Con in October. So boom, there's that. Of course, New York comics. Uh, but every chapter of the comic will be uploaded digitally or dropped anyway on Wednesdays on StarTrek.com. This is just news that broke today uh, at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 Eastern. So every Wednesday after this Thursday, after this Star Trek day, there'll be a new chapter. Not cure what's up with what, but it looks like a lot of fun. Skin a cat, holiday party, worst contact, holograms all the way down, and Walk, Don't Run are the five titles. And this is all at StarTrek.com that I just announced this morning. So a little news. A different kind of, you know what? And this is all, I mean, cool that they've gotten that lineup of voice cast to do animated voices, animated narration. We'll have to see. But this is quite a cool lineup of cooperative souls who did this. And obviously... This Star Trek Day is being held, and as we said, this is a cool lineup of specials that are being released, uh, these events. Oh, there's also a discount in the Star Trek store. If you use Star Trek Day, you can get 25% off everything at StarTrek.com. Okay, there's my promotional commercial for that. But we've got this, the animated celebration, the live event in theaters. Plus the uh, very short treks coming starting Friday and then the next weeks on Wednesdays. And the special episode, the special episode of the Jerry O'Connell special. The thing is, all of this makes for a very different kind of Star Trek day to day, whether it's virtual or live at an event, which is not happening aside from the screenings, right? the lower deck screening showing two commercial screenings of strange new worlds could be savvy, but this is all under the, uh, under the shadow of, and because of the current strikes, the SAG strike, which got started in June, the, the writers have been at it since uh, May 1st, the actors SAG after uh, two months later, again, the, Directors settled thinking that the actors wouldn't go to a strike and that this all wouldn't build up, and it has. But the bottom line is nobody's filming. And as we saw with the big summer cons, and as we're still seeing the big Labor Day cons, the kerfluffle over actors who, especially actors who are more or less retired and using this for income, the carve-outs for what they're doing. 
so as not to promote the franchise, even though they can still promote themselves and their relationship with fans. That gets problematical at times, but the very, the very most you would think is that Lower Decks, <laughs> which is now currently airing, and all of the Star Treks, it's hard to celebrate Star Trek Day without the actors and without the writers involved. By God, they finally started getting writers on stage, the showrunners even, and now not. And that's going to happen, and that's this is 2023. So kudos to Paramount+, Plus, who I will tell you is not the leading aggriever among the alliance of the producers and studios that are that are apparently dragging this strike out and apparently do not all agree on ongoing strategy you can read all the opinion pieces and again read follow writers and thinkers uh, a lot of our star trek folks are out there opining but you can just read the trades and uh, see what's going on or you know what Watch about the trades. Watch for the statements from the unions as well. There are those who would say the trades are aligned with the producers at first blush. So just, just to bear that in mind. No, this is a well-organized Star Trek day considering what they had to work with. Yay. And I know that all of these, you know, voice acting is one of the carve-outs. Animation is one of the carve-outs because most of the time, the mainstream SAG-AFTRA and the mainstream, especially the mainstream Writers Guild contracts don't apply to animation unless it's a really special like network evening primetime show. Now that's problematic and that needs to change. Everybody, writers are writers. They're not, there's not subpar for animation and that needs to change. Animation is not the world it was 30 and 40 and 50 years ago. For starters, it never should have been the first place, but it certainly isn't now. That's another topic, and that's a topic we broached before. But safe to say that all of this live action, well, I'm going to say Jerry's work, Jerry O'Connell's work for the special was filmed, filmed on the eve of and before the actors actually went on strike. So there's that. Let's set some kind of car, a documentary carve out. But what's interesting about Star Trek Day is here, as we've seen in the last two or three weeks, what has happened? Well, you can still enjoy all this special programming. You can go to the events, the live screenings, if you're lucky enough to be near one. You can go to one of the Lower Deck screenings with the animation special involved. You can do all that. But you can also, if you are in Los Angeles or now New York, you can go by for the United We Strike, United We Trek, Theme pickets. Yes, we had the Writers Guild's organized theme picket for Star Trek, among many other theme pickets, because they're fun and exciting. And the main thing is they just keep people's spirits up after days and days and days of trudging on the picket lines. The Maywin, which I attended and which I covered in front of Paramount Plus, there's a wonderful 20 minute video. I'm very proud of it. I'm very proud of what Scott and Kyle put together. I, it's, it shocked me how cool it is. And it's a mix of reunions with the writers of with each other much less me and them uh meeting some of the newer ones meeting how many people realize how many people have been working on the newer shows that have not yet had their time in the sun really barely the showrunners and have had a chance to have their voices heard also besides the personal end of it just getting a lot of the strike issues out and then we also managed to drop a couple of bits of news along the way, which I was too close to realize and filter out. And uh, so kudos on Trek Movie to uh, and Anthony over there to figure out that I, I was actually making a little bit of news there. But that was, you see the family picture. There's 200, 300 people in that. This is going to be even bigger. This one now, the actors are in it full bore. Lots of actors came by and some IOTC crew people came by in May. But now it's it's a serious thing. It's a done deal. It's not just a cooperative, collaborative, supportive individual strike. It's SAG AFTRA is in it. They've organized this in tandem with WGA, but now this is their time to shine. So in fact, it grew out of an idea, John Billingsley told me. He and um, Jonathan Del Arco were talking at Vegas about what could happen here. So Michelle Hurd is also involved. So she's on the board, a local officer in LA, kind of been taking the lead on carving out, remembering 
that conventions are not just about studio gauntlets, <laughs> studio junkets. They are about individual actors doing this on their own. So this is a SAG after event. And then later on added one in New York at the Paramount building. So you do have from 930 to noon in the morning, Friday morning, picketing, guest picketing, SAG AFTRA, WGA, IOTSE and Teamster supporters who have all been officially supporting, not you know, not on strike, but officially so they don't have to be on strike. There's no shooting going on for the most part, but they are honoring their colleagues' strike, their union brothers and sisters strike. But most of all, in both sites, this is open to fans. It's been promoted for at least 10 days broadly. Lots of, I know here in LA, lots of fans are going to be going. I know a lot of the fan groups are going. LA Away team, uh, the LA function of the Star Trek family group on Facebook. I know the Granddaddy Club here in LA, the USS Angeles is planning to have a show of force. There too. So there's going to be a lot of fan turnout with some caveats. Uh, no uniforms. If you want to wear strike regalia, that's cool. But no uniforms, no obvious fanishness. Not to not to let things get up, you know, because the last thing they want is to turn a picket. Um, and some speakers, I'm sure, occasionally. Not it's not an event. It's it's not a rally. It's still a picket. But there were times when I mean, it's it's full of individual conversations and. Sure, there are, there's probably fans coming into town for this and probably fans showing up in L.A. and in New York, too, as well. But that's the bottom line. They're saying also no pets. Bring your own water. If you're actually here, try to ride share in, do Uber or Lyft in because it's going to be a mob. You see that family picture from May. This could easily be three or four times bigger. I don't think we'll all fit there at the left side of the gate. And of course, the bottom line here is it's another picket. It's another day of picketing by both unions now. It's another spirit lifter. It's meant to show, ha ha, we're Star Trek. And most of all, it's piggybacking on the feels for Star Trek Day. It's like, hey, look, guys, in 2023, here's another way we can celebrate Star Trek. The franchise, the founding, the creator, Gene Roddenberry, everybody who ever drew a paycheck for star trek and yeah you have your favorites you got the things you love to debate you've even got the things that people hopefully that you know love to grump us about and there's the whole thing that's kept a chunk of the online world busy uh, i try to get rid of them but you know even the time i mean it's this thing that has given rise to all these careers and opportunities and friendships and working relationships uh, and moments of memory, this thing that's done all of that and just as much or more than any other franchise out there can celebrate Star Trek Day in a slightly different way because it won't happen often. Lord, I hope this doesn't happen often because there's a town that's hurting. And as I said in my post, there's all, all the groups that are there. SAG-AFTRA has their foundation, community foundation. Writers Guild promotes the Entertainment Community Fund. We have our own, and that's for, and there's other groups that are just helping the not writers, not actors, all the rest of the industry that is hurting by not working. There are ways you can support. Go to my Instagram on this. Go to my Facebook page, my Trekland Facebook on this. There's a lot of them. You can Google them yourselves. Then outside of that, there is the, my guest last week, Claire Willits, organized and now has a whole team, volunteers, loosely based wherever they live including the ones in LA who can put feet on the ground, boots on the ground, the Star Trek uh, snack squad. There is the green, I'm going to get it wrong, the green envelope grocers food fund to get food to striking and affected. There's all kinds of ways you can help if you were stuck at home and don't think you can be part of this. You can. There's several ways to help. I've got several of them listed at my place, <laughs> at my spots. That's it. That's out there. That's happening. If you're local or you're flying in or getting yourself into LA or New York now, which was organized later. It was organized later because originally Friday is a day of SAG elections. 
SAG after elections in New York, and they didn't want to organize something on a day when they want to be focused there. The union, but some of the New York based Trek uh, WGA writers stepped up. They may not even be Trek organized. I've just heard this. Uh, John Billingsley shared this with me. They stepped up and said, no, we need to have something here equivalent to what they're doing in LA. Just it's smaller by necessity. I mean, there's, most people live in LA. Forget Toronto. <laughs> Most of the writers and and uh, actors are still LA based. A chunk of them are LA based, the regular cast, I mean. So they said, no, we should have something in New York. So there is something at the Paramount Building there, in New York. And if you're checking your Instagram post, you can see the uh, the New York uh, address, the Paramount Building there, if you need it. So I don't know how many of you today in our chat are going to be at either place, or maybe you'll be hopefully watching some. I'll try to live stream a little, but I really want to primarily do what I did last time, which was take video, good video, and some small conversations and weave it together now. Have a high bar. after, And this may be, with so many more folks and so many more fans, we're very few fans. That was partly by design. They were worried about the restricted area. I mean, it's not a big chunk of... of, of I mean, you've got the whole block from Gower down to, what is it, Lemon Grove, whatever, along, it's not just at the gate. And you can go around the block if you want to go all the way around and past Hollywood Cemetery and walk the entire quarter mile, whatever it is. But, no, it's more than a quarter mile, I think. Ah, city blocks. Whatever you're doing, or whether you're at home trying to keep up with all of it from home, um, you can take part from home too. It'll be interesting. The live crowds are going to be just huge. It, I'm hoping it. I'm hoping everything stays organized. It stays an active picket. It was hard to picket with the 300 people and stay on the. You couldn't help but have conversations happening. That's part of what makes the day special. But it does need to remain an active picket. And if you're a fan headed there, you just need to remember that it's not going to be one long selfie squad. Uh, there'll be conversations happening and people trying. And you know what? There will be people picketing. Hopefully, if they picket at Paramount every day because it's close to home they may, hopefully they'll get the word that we're going to be invaded again by the Star Trek people. Now, the people working the tent last time told me, and you see in the video, they were like, oh yeah, this is cool. None of them had a Star Trek tie, although they got in the spirit of it. So that's happening. It's going to be, I'm just saying, a really different kind of Star Trek day this year. Lots to celebrate, lots of specials, there's lots of surprises. And yet, it's going to be a very 2023 Star Trek day this year, one like no other. In fact, well, what am I going to say here? Even in 08, 07 and 08, the strike wasn't happening in September. So it was mainly a fall, late fall, early spring uh, event then. So this wasn't an issue. There was that, that, Star Trek Day picket that we, the last thing in December, the last thing that we did at the old original Star Trek.com when it was a, a more of a news site than marketing um, and everything was home written um, and lots of video. Yeah, this didn't apply. You're going to see a little bit of history Friday again. Uh, the bottom line, let's just get this damn strike over. And if you're following along on that front, and we're not going to get into that today, but the focus has really shifted back to producers and the apparent divisions, even the divisions between, as we've said sometimes, between the old school studios and the new kids on the block, the tech streamers versus the old brick and mortar, you know, like Paramount and Warners and Universal when they're not overtaken by the, the Wall Street pension for quarterly, quarterly, quarterly profits or they're not coming out of uh, Silicon Valley, like Netflix and Hulu and Prime. Just saying. So, do you have special plans? What are you up to? I want to thank all of our Patreons. Yay! Our TTL Club, that's Diana Hopkins, Robin Wilson, Lawrence Todd, Anne-Marie Siegel, Justin Porteous, Galinda Bruton, Chris Jiggins, Pranakasha Productions, Comedy Forecast, and Andrew Jasimski, and our TTL Live Wires, Robert McLean, Byron Bailey, Halbeard Gunn Johnson, J.R. Poole, Alan Hohensey, Dave Gregory, Tobias Rex, Donna S. Runyon, and Casey Shafsky. 
Thanks so much, everybody. If you want to jump in on the Patreon, it's a new month. You can jump in. It's five bucks and ten bucks. Very simple. The ten buck folks a month get access to our earlier, the first two or three years of backstage creatives and uh, interviews from the Portal 47 archive. So it's patreon.com slash Trekland Live. Real simple. Real simple. Always appreciate that. Uh, I kept it re real simple out of the gate, the way things are now. Also, it's time. Hey, it's cooling off. Maybe you want a fall trip to L.A. Maybe you want a winter before the rains come. Yeah, stay out of January, February if you can. But anytime you're in L.A. is a good time for Trekline Treks, your own away mission. Check it out. If that appeals to you, if you want to customize your own landing party, cosplay where you like, I can help you out. I'll take you there. I'll wrangle for you. We'll do all the things. It'll be a day you'll never forget. And it's just one day. All right. The big tour is coming next July with Terrace. But this is simple. This is one day if that's more your preference or even your pocketbook. Hey, guys, we're on hiatus from the Trek Files right now. So it's a great time to go back and check out the last 10 years, the last 10 seasons anyway, five years, 10 seasons. Aaron, uh, Aaron Walkie was our, our finale season 10 guest, but so many great people, some folks that we have lost over the years, like Dorothy Fontana, Richard Arnold, but mostly all good, timeless, evergreen conversations that are going on. And of course, if you're watching live or later, you know, you can get me at LarryNemichuk.com on Twitter, Larry's Trekland here on YouTube. Please like and subscribe, share it all, ring the bell, do the things. Also Instagram and yeah, still Facebook and Portal47.net. If you are suffering the post-con blues this weekend after Dragon Con and after Galaxy Con Austin, and where else did I see cons happening this weekend? Yes, uh, post con blues are alleviated by jumping into the portal and having a mini con all year long, all month long, all month, all year long. All right, thanks so much for being here, everybody. Love our TTL community, especially all you new folk who were might have been here. I hope you sounded off. Um, but you know, till we meet again, wherever it is. Just, there's still folks uh, catching the bug out there that was never, never went away. And there's talk of one that may be resistant to some of the vaccines under that big COVID umbrella. So come on, everybody. Be smart. Take care. Stay healthy. Do all the things. And oh my goodness, stay woke. Check your sources. And trek well.